A staple I do in all interviews in order to start things off is to ask that you elaborate a bit about your work and this particular role for those not familiar with it. I voice a uh, female V in Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I loved getting to play this character uh, from the the demo in 2018 all the way through the DLC. It's been a lot of time with this character as if anybody has played this game, they know there is a lot of uh, content, a lot of dialogue choices, a lot of options. Um, so it's been really such a gift to get to work on this project and to get to work with uh, CDPR and the incredible cast. So uh, it's been fantastic. But I've been uh, acting since I was six years old, um, doing film work, TV, um, animation, anime, uh, obviously video games and commercials and anything in between. I've gotten to direct some projects. I've gotten to uh, produce some projects, write some projects. Uh, so I've definitely uh, experienced a wide variety of this industry. As mentioned, you provide the voice for female V. Could you tell us a bit about the character and the situation she finds herself in, whether that's from the base game or if you want to dive into Phantom Liberty? Obviously, it's going to shift based on people's initial choices of which path that you want to take. Um, but the stakes are very, very high, no matter which path you take for this game. Uh, one of the things that I really loved about working on this project, I love when characters are, um, especially for video games, in a very realistic, relatable setting, although hopefully most of us don't live in a place like Night City. Um, the one thing that is super relatable is the emotion and the connections with the people in the game. Um, so there are, I hate to spoil it because I know some people are just jumping in for the first time, um, even though the the base game came out uh, years ago. Um, but there is a really intense relationship um, that V has um, that is kind of uh, put through some emotional turmoil pretty early in the base game. Um, and that kind of shifts and, and uh, based on your relationship and which path you take, but it, it, it kind of sets the bar for V and the stakes and um, what happens to V as you play this game. Um, it, the stakes are definitely life and death from the very beginning, um, which is uh, always fun to get to play because, you know, emotion, uh, emotions are high. Everything's very intense. Um, and it's just a, it's a beautiful game to get to immerse yourself in. Um, I remember when they first showed me the demo, um, I was so enamored by how realistic everything looked and how honest everything was and how grounded they wanted everything to be. Um, and it was really cool to get to be a part of. It's been some time since the release of the initial game, as we've mentioned. What was it like re reprising your role for the recently released Phantom Liberty? So fun to get to go back, but um, anytime I've gotten to reprise a character that I've played uh, for a video game or for an animated series that I worked on 10 years ago, whatever the case may be, uh, there's a lot of pressure getting to come back, especially for a, a project that um, is as beloved and known as this one, um, especially when you're surrounded by such incredible heavy hitters of talent that you get to work with. Um, the last thing you want to do is let anybody down. So as excited as I was to get to go back, I really just wanted to make sure to do um, to do the content justice and to be able to go back and voice V again. Even though years had elapsed, you, uh, you just want to make sure that nothing is getting lost and nothing is getting forgotten and you are right back to where uh, you were a couple of years ago when you were recording the base game. If it helps, I've run through the DLC and you were spot on again. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Thank you. When preparing to voice V, were you given any initial direction in regards to the character, just in terms of an example of prep work to get into the mindset of this particular performance? Oh, um, I think uh, initially the the audition that I was given um, said so much about the character. I got two audition scenes and I remember them very vividly. Um, one audition scene was um, with uh, Vic. And that was really just having that scene and and getting to see the relationship with um, V and Vic told me so much about who this character was. And I really connected with that. And I remember leaving the audition going, man, I love this character and I feel like I can relate to this character. There's 
so much heart uh, in V, and that's something that I really gravitated towards, especially in a in a uh, a world that feels so desolate and aggressive and harsh. To know that somebody has something that they will always fight for, um, and I think V is always fighting for something um, so so um, aggressively and passionately, and looking out for the people that uh, V cares about. Um, that was very helpful to know. Um, but when you when you audition for something, you know that there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands of actors that are auditioning for the same role. So you just hope that your uh, your swing is what they're looking for. And so when they called me to work on the demo in 2018, it kind of told me about the world and how things had shifted and what the stakes were for. Um, I think the, the, the initial demo was um, going in uh, on a mission with Jackie and uh, kind of presenting that. And then as things changed, obviously direction would change based on um, this path or this path or what would be changing, what would we be seeing before this? Um, and I was still very fortunate to work with um, the, the creative and narrative team at CDPR who were very helpful in giving any sort of information because there are so many side quests and so many Quests, And then I have a fantastic director in Pierce O'Toole, who is so meticulous and so organized, and he makes sure to give you exactly where you were coming from before, even if we recorded that six months prior to what we're working on now, um, just to make sure that we're in the right emotional space. He knows exactly what performance he's going to be getting from the other actors, even though we're recording separately. Um, so, so much of being uh, a voice actor and working in video games is trusting the narrative team who is seeing what the art looks like, trusting the quests that are being written, all the elements that you are unaware of and you can't see, and trusting the people like leading you through this kind of blind box, and uh, then just jumping and diving right into that and letting all of the unknowns um, kind of fall away and just trusting what is right in front of you, the dialogue, the story, the characters and um, being fully immersed in that. When performing the role, were there any particular lines or moments that really stuck out to you, whether that's a behind the scenes moment or something from the dialogue? So many. Um, I mean, we we started working, um, I think in May or April or May of 2018, came back again and did the second demo in, um, I think, April of 2019. And then I, I worked on the base game probably from uh, April of actually probably more of like May or June of 2019 all the way through probably February of 2020 pretty consistently so there were a lot of amazing lines that I loved um one of one of my favorite lines is uh V says I just want the world to know that I was here and that I mattered and I think that that's something that's so relatable uh for all of us I mean we all want to make an impact if it's our career, if it's our relationships, if it's the people that were around, we just want people to, that there was evidence that we were here, that our lives mattered, that it made a difference. Um, and what's been so cool about getting to work on this game and seeing people take ownership of V from the character creation through the choices that they make. Um, and I love getting to watch the streams and watch other people play. Um, getting to see how all of these people have made V matter and what those choices look like for them. Like what, what makes, what makes life worth living with all of these different people. And I feel like it's a really, it's a really cool way to connect us all, especially during the pandemic when we felt so isolated. I was just watching streams of people playing cyberpunk going, this is actually so surreal. Like this is my voice or Gavin's voice, depending on which, um, which stream I was watching and just seeing like, wow, we're all bonded by these choices that we're making. And oh my gosh, I would have made that choice. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't have made that choice, but that's, that's so valid. And that's such a cool outcome. So um, that's a line that's always stuck with me and has also affected how I've responded to other people playing the game and connecting with the character, which has been really lovely. Um, and then a lot of the fun slang that you get just in cyberpunk, we would be recording it and like, you know, checking like, is this right? Is this, does this make sense? Are we saying this in the right infl uh, inflection? Um, so that was really, really uh, a fun, a fun process to get to work on. And then during uh, Phantom Liberty, man, it's so hard to pick 
moments that were my absolute favorite. Um, gosh, it's so hard because there's a couple that stand out based on different endings. So um, I would be interested to see the endings that people pick and what lines stick out to them because uh, those are some of my favorite ones. Yeah, it gets pretty varied at the end oh, of Fats absolutely. of Liberty, to say the least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really goes off and yeah, that oh, was wild. so fun. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't. That's the thing about CDPR. They do not like play it safe or go like, yeah, we want to make sure that everybody gets a nice little tied up, you know, no, it, it can go any and all ways. There are the, I mean, the childproof locks are off. <laughs> so you guys are in for, in for a ride. It was a pretty profound for me when I finished. I was like, wow, I got to think about that for a bit. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that was, uh, and I mean, that was pretty much my if I could say that encompassed my whole experience recording the game, there were days that I would like leave from day one recording the um, recording the demo. I would leave and be driving home or driving to my next session, and I would just be like lost in thought of what does this world mean? Like, wh if this was the life that I was living, like, what choices would I make? What what would be important to me? Um, so it it absolutely makes you think. And uh, I I love games like that, but uh, getting to live that as I was recording and then getting to live it again, playing the game and watching other people get play the game is like so special. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite things about about this team and how they write is. Uh, they're not going to let anybody off easy. Like they want you to really sit with it, to like feel everything, think through these characters, like really sit with your choices. Um, and, uh, and then you can always go back and change unlike uh, in, in real life. Um, but it, it does make a difference and there are consequences or there are repercussions or, uh, or great things that can happen from the choices you make. But um, I think this game does a really great job of, uh, letting you kind of live with that and see what happens. I think we kind of went over my next question a little bit, but let's oh. <laughs> let's let's bridge off of this. We can make this work. Sure. This one is a slightly different question. Uh, since you're more embodying a player created character uh, in this situation, what's it like to see your voice attached to a character in a game? More so in Cyberpunk, but perhaps draw from your other performances as well. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's it's very interesting. It's also uh, really cool. Um, I've, I've, when the game was, uh, had first come out, I was telling people like, send me pictures of the V that you have created. Um, and just, uh, that was so interesting to see like the choices that people had made or what they wanted the character to look like. Um, because I, I mean, I don't really, while I'm recording it, I don't really give it that much, um, thought, mm -hmm. I guess, um, just because I know that the the look of the character is going to shift so much. I, I mean, I'm obviously aware of, um, you know, any sort of like physical issues that, that V might be going through, obviously with the relic, there are some, some physical, uh, I guess, impediments that you might be dealing with at different points in time. So physically that's going to impact things. But as far as like the look of the character, um, that's not something that I usually consider. Um, but yeah, when I've worked on on other projects, sure. I mean, if they'll say this character is very, very tall and very statuesque and will always be that way or is going to be wearing this long form fitted gown, um, that's going to shift the way that you fight in a battle. If you're like wearing a corset versus if you're, you know, wearing leather pants and have a really great jacket that's very conducive for that sort of fighting. So um, that that sort of stuff will kind of shift the way that I play the character just by uh, keeping that in mind. But for, for Cyberpunk specifically, um, that wasn't really something that I considered. Um, most of it felt more like uh, doing a, a film job or doing some sort of, um, uh, I guess, cinematic performance, um, just because it was so grounded and so real and, and um, you you just want to make it seem as natural as possible. Um, and that's the, the, the interesting thing about voiceover in general, I've done some motion capture stuff, which obviously that is going to be far more uh, involved as far as what what's happening with your body. When I worked on Horizon Zero Dawn, um, I had broken my my ankle <laughs> right oh. as I had booked that job. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I hope that my ankle heals in time so I could do this job. 
the most ironic thing ever was the character that I got cast as was not the character who was dealing with a broken leg. Oh. The other actress who was totally fine, she was dealing with a broken leg. Um, and I showed up to set to do the job, having just like barely healed enough to do all of that. So it was watching her like struggle with her foot and her ankle and me trying to be like, okay, don't let this like weakness that you're mm -hmm. feeling in your ankle show. Um, so that was a, that was an interesting experience. And that's probably the closest I've come to being like my physicality could have impacted what was actually being seen on, uh, on screen or in the game. Um, but that's one of the best parts about being an actor is, you know, you do on camera work um, and there are things that you have to be aware of hitting the mark, wearing the wardrobe, all of that kind of stuff. You do voiceover work um, where you still have to stay on your mark because the mic can't move, um, but you have a little bit more freedom and like what you want to wear and things that you want to try. And you can do bigger facial expressions because usually nobody's seeing it unless it's a uh, facially captured performance. Um, and then you run into motion capture where you have no set. You have this crazy outfit with all these Velcro balls. Um, and yet all of these, you want to try to strike the most grounded, honest performance um, that people can get immersed and lost in. And that's your job of finding with all of these different parameters, how to produce the same relatable, honest content, um, which is really fun to get to do. It's like stretching all these different muscles or putting on different uh, styles of shoes to do dance, like ballet versus tap versus jazz. It's just a uh, fun way to 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 try to get to perform and to tell stories well cyberpunk 2077 appears to be wrapped up at the current moment is v a character you'd be interested in revisiting should some sort of sequel come up down the road absolutely my cat even says yes cat. <laughs> cat knows how much i love this character um i i any time that i would get to come back and and get to voice v again or to work with cdpr i would be elated um this is uh such a, an important character um for me i i spent so much time in such a condensed amount of time with her um i don't know if i've ever played a character uh that's had this many lines or maybe it just feels that way because some of the characters that i've played have been spanned over 10 years um and then this one was a lot of lines in a condensed amount of time um but no, I, I love her so much. There's my cat! <laughs> There's Aries! Oh, Tell us a bit first, about your cat. Uh, I have two cats. I have two, two black cats, Aries and Zemi. Um, Aries <laughs> is uh, is clearly the one who is not camera shy. Yeah. Um, anytime I have uh, self-tapes or often auditions, he sits right outside the booth so he can see me and make sure I'm okay while I'm recording. Um, and for uh, when we'll do self tapes at home for on camera stuff, he's had multiple experiences where he'll meow or he will walk right in front of the camera. Um, there's been a couple times he's jumped into the frame. Uh, Zemi, not so much, but uh, Zemi is better at parties with with people nearby. Mm. Aries can't do that. He'll hide behind a booth. So it's so a virtual people. <laughs> yes, 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 virtual people he's fine with. He's fine with the idea of getting to say hi to people uh, as long as everybody is at a virtual distance. <laughs> I love, I'm sure people will love that. <laughs> Just like the cat in, uh, in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. What are your thoughts on the genre of cyberpunk in general? Oh, I love it. Um, I, I've become even more of a fan after working on this project, of course, but, um, I think what's been so cool about, uh, this, I guess, resurgence, because it's been around for forever, Long time, obviously, yes. and people have been involved and like love doing this and creating campaigns and doing all that stuff, which is always fun to get to see. Um, but what's been so cool is getting to see like the anime that, that came from, uh, that brought people into the cyberpunk world. So people that weren't really aware or were like, eh, I don't know if the game speaks to me, but the anime speaks to me or getting to read the audiobooks or things like that. And I think it's so cool because now uh, this great resurgence of cyberpunk world, people are jumping in in whatever um, genre speaks to them. And then they branch out and go, oh, maybe I'll try this. Oh, maybe I'll try this. And it's just been kind of a really fun way to connect everybody to figure out which path everybody took to find their way into the cyberpunk world. 
Moving a little bit away from cyberpunk, what are some other voiceovers or characters that people may know you from? Um, I, a lot of people know me from my work as Asuna in Sword Art Online, um, which is uh, an anime that I can't believe we worked on for like 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Lucy in Fairy Tale, um, Makoto in Persona 5, um, let's see, uh, Patty in Soul Eater. Um, I also voice Trix in Miraculous Ladybug. Uh, I voice Sailor Venus in Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal. Um, I worked uh, for Radio Disney for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I was the voice of the station. Um, and I also got to write for them as well, which was really uh, a fun thing to get to be a part of. Um, man, uh, I've, I've gotten to work on a lot of things. Oh, Sarda in Boruto and uh, Naruto Next Generation, which has been really fun to get to play i again never thought i would get to jump into the naruto boruto universe um and then i work on fire emblem i play uh Rhea in uh fire emblem i play uh aurelia in uh league of legends uh so just a, a variety of things usually they're really good with weapons i am not good with weapons so that's usually the one thing that we don't have in common <laughs> <laughs> the cat's just watching us. Uh, there, there, there oh, was peeking out, Aries. Yeah, it poked out to let <laughs> to give us a little bit of a view. Uh, Perfect. There, there was one character you you didn't quite mention, which I noticed on your your listing there. To build on that, I understand you were the quartermaster in Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, absolutely. We, we still stream that about once a month on the channel. We call her the cute really? quartermaster. To humor How us briefly, <laughs> would you tell us a bit about that role in the character? Just since I don't think it'll come up again. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, no, I, I loved getting to do that. That was the very first time that um, my likeness got scanned into a game. Oh, so that is you. <laughs> that is <laughs> yeah, <me. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, my my cousin, when the game came out, they had uh, scanned my likeness and put me in the game. And um, he was playing it. And he told, I think he was like, oh man 12 or 13 at the time and my aunt was like no that's that's Jeremy and he's like no it's not her hair's in a ponytail and Jeremy never wears her hair in a ponytail um so when we were doing the scans for the game uh we did one scan with like no makeup hair in a ponytail one scan with it like a nice like 1940s like dolled up look um, and then we did like something in between. Um, so of course, like what, what they wanted to go with, they're like, well, I feel like as the quartermaster, she didn't got, she doesn't have time to fix her hair and put on a lot of makeup. So we went, we went just a uh, basic, uh, all natural, no makeup, um, which my cousin was like, that's not my, that's not my cousin at all, but it is. Um, no, that was really, really cool to get to be a part of. I loved getting to kind of jump into the 1940s, getting to do that kind of fun accent, um, and of course, getting to be in Call of Duty, which was really, really special. Um, I got to do that right after doing Horizon Zero Dawn. So that was two projects that I remember um, I had gone to the callback for Horizon Zero Dawn on crutches and uh, thought that I had just sprained my ankle. Obviously, we know that I, I broke it and I booked that job and I had to heal really quick. Um, after I had, uh, found out I booked the job and broke my ankle, I got called in to do the audition for this one. And I was like, please disregard the giant cast on my leg and the crutches. I will heal. Um, and they said, well, it's okay. Uh, we're only going to need to use like your likeness from like waist up. Uh, so I, I got to do the job, uh, with a, with a broken ankle. Both of those were at the exact same time, which was, uh, pretty surreal you would think like when you're injured you're done especially for motion capture when they're capturing your likeness but i was so lucky they were able to make it work well you lucked out there you got some pretty big roles back to back <laughs> absolutely and then you, yeah going back to cyberpunk i wanted to chat more about the dialogue of the game there's some very in interesting in-universe phrases what's it like to say some of the more out there phrases and do you have any unique favorite words from the game Choom is always fun. Choom, yeah. You know, once, you, once you get used to saying choom, then everybody's a choom. That's always great. Um, there was a line. Um, uh, I, I think it, I think V says it to Takamura or Takamura says it to V. I can't remember. Um, but somebody says in the base game, uh, you're a smart little muffin. And we thought that was great. We had, we laughed about that for a while. We're like, well, we don't, we don't have cookies anymore. Like we just, everybody is a smart little muffin now. Um, 
So we, we really liked that one. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's some of the fun of uh, just being an actor in general is like, sometimes you get like the, the craziest, um, the craziest, most out there lines that are actually so grounded in the universe. And so you get to escape this world, jump into that one, say these things and go, if I ever said this anywhere, nobody would know what I was talking about or everybody would ask a bunch of questions. But here it's just totally normal. Um, yeah, I mean, I when I got to work on the um, cyberpunk audiobook uh, recently for no coincidences, that was very, very fun. Um, and the uh, I, I was used to all of the the slang and all of the words because I had played the game. It just felt like coming home and jumping into this world. Um, but the, the producer who was um, working with me and like, you know, reading everything, he's like, should we check the pronunciation of this word? I was like, Oh no, 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 This is very common. This is not a weird word. This is a very common word. He was like, Oh, uh, okay. I was like, just trust me on this. It's very, it's very cyberpunk. Um, and then once he got to the end of the book, he was like, yeah, it was very common. I feel like I know this world now. It's like, you do. Now you got to jump into the game. Um, so yeah, it's always a lot. It's a lot of fun. You just learn a new vocabulary and now you feel like you speak a different language. It really has its own distinct flair to it. Yeah. Uh, with that, Cyberpunk 2077 can be a rather dark and grim world. What was it like balancing more casual um, you know, lines versus your wild, exciting lines uh, versus some of the more somber points in the narrative? That's the that's some of the the most fun I think as an actor is um, it keeping it all in in perspective because yeah when we're living when we're living our lives even the the most bleak desolate times in our lives where we're the most depressed where everything feels like it's going wrong we're still trying to find moments of humor we're still trying to find moments of levity because that gets us through so what I love about this game is. Um, while everything is so serious and the stakes are life and death, we're not going to shy away from cracking jokes. We're not going to, I mean, V definitely has a gallows sense of humor. I have a, a darker sense of humor. Anytime I have the option to infuse a slight bit of a joke to a little bit of a line, um, giving somebody the option if they want to go there with the humor, I'm all about it. Um, just because I know, especially when things are so bleak and when, I know when I'm playing a game or when I'm watching a movie or when I'm living a time in my life where everything is really challenging. Um, if everybody is just so somber and serene and like, I'm so sorry you're dealing with this, it makes it feel so much heavier and so much harder to get out of it. And if you're playing this game and this is your escape from uh, the frustrating time in your life, the last thing you want to do is jump into a game in a world where everybody's like, Oh, this is so somber and so bleak. You want like a little bit of levity and as you're getting through the story. So I think it's important to get to have that option. And that's what's great about this game is like there's always a more serious option that you can say, no, I'm going to stick with this very dark, dark path. I want to go and embrace it, which I, I also admire that. And I also take that path multiple times. Um, so I, I really love working on that and, and playing those characters. I also like really enjoyed um getting to do like the most absurd things like uh the the scenes with uh brendan uh the vending machine or getting to like go and talk to people as they're uh just like having these most random conversations or advertising the most absurd products um all that stuff is really really fun and i think it helps balance because this is such a heavy game and it needs to be such a heavy game i love when i get to talk to players and uh, they'll say the message of this game or the impact this game has on me. It's changed my life. It's made me rethink things about uh, myself and what I really want in my life and make these like huge life altering uh, changes, which is amazing. And that's incredible to be a part of a game that does that for people um, and has also done that for me. Um, and I don't want to lose sight of that, but I also want to make sure that people are having fun. Um, and it's a, it's a really, I think it's a really important balance to be able to strike both of that. And I think this game does it really, really well. I'm not necessarily sure this is a thing, but being V, your character is often up against Johnny Silverhand, AKA Keanu Reeves. Did you ever imagine him being there while delivering the lines? Or I guess in general, did you think of the connection between the two characters while you're doing your chats? Yeah, it's, it's so, it's, uh, impossible not to, um, I, I never have gotten to meet him. 
I got to see him once ride off on a motorcycle, literally as the sun was setting, I was pulling up for my session. He was riding off into the sunset, which is like a very, that's gotta be like the, the way that you have to encounter Keanu for the first time in real life. Um, but usually he had recorded before me, or I at least had moments where I would get to hear his voice. Um, and so I would get to know how he would respond to the dialogue. And so it's such a gift to have his performance to play off of and have this banter between the two of them. Cause that's some of the stuff that's the most fun to get to do. Um, and yeah, it's, it's impossible not to imagine someone being there, having a conversation with them, especially when you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to have that actor recorded before you, that you can hear them and hear what their performance was. Um, some of my favorite stuff to work on um, in the base game was uh, one of the endings um, where without spoiling anything, if somebody hasn't chosen that ending yet, um, V and Johnny Silverhand are more aligned than they have ever been in the game. Um, and it was so cool to get to, uh, play opposite, not only Keanu, but Gavin who voices male V, um, because Gavin, Gavin's timing and my timing have to be very, very close. Um, but CDPR really wanted to make sure that, uh, we didn't feel like we were being forced to a copycat performance of each other. They were like, we hired both of you. We want you to do your versions of this character. We just have the parameters of timing. So um, we would uh, have to do things a couple different ways and, but they didn't want us to listen to each other and just like copy paste. Um, so for that one ending, it was really, really cool to have to figure out how do I sync up with both of these performances while making it my own. And we all three have our unique identities and our own way of playing these characters. But in this moment, everybody has to be aligned. And it was such a fun challenge. And it was some of my favorite stuff to record uh, ever, just because like everybody would go, this is so frustrating. I'm so sorry. This is so hard. I'm like, no, I love it. It's, it's so cool. It seems like an impossible challenge, but we'll find a way we'll, we'll make it through. And that was, uh, that was really cool to get to be a part of and to get to, uh, listen to their performance and go, Ooh, I love the way they did that. That's not how I would do it. So how do I integrate what I would do without losing their performance? Um, and, uh, that was very, very special because it, it gave me an even greater appreciation for both of them. They're such incredible actors. So, uh, it gave me an, an even greater appreciation for their work and also an even greater understanding for how they have chosen to play these characters. Great. Uh, you've been absolutely excellent for my last question. I'd like to leave a spot for okay. you to go over anything that I might have missed during the interview or anything you'd like to say. Oh, I, I don't I don't think so. Uh, I'm just so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much to all of the players and uh, for the for this amazing fan base of cyberpunk who has embraced this game and loved this game. And um I so appreciate any time I get to see see you or see comments and get to talk to you at events. Um, I it really means the world to get to hear how you interact with this game um, and uh, how much you enjoy it. I'm really loving seeing how everybody is enjoying the DLC. Um, and if you're just jumping in for the first time, um, enjoy your time in Night City, and I hope to get to see you soon.